Then we have a, a, a several phase three trials that have reported out successful roads. Let's start with ofatumumab, Amit. So you're referring to the Asclepios 1 and Asclepios 2 trials. Uh, as Stephen has mentioned, uh, these were um, randomized uh, active comparator trials with teriflutamide as the comparator and uh, ofatumumab at 20 milligram monthly subcutaneous injection dose. This is a fully humanized anti-CD20 to distinguish it from rituximab as a chimeric and uh, oquilizumab as a, as a humanized. Um, the uh, studies were both uh, quite positive uh, with, with a, a 50 and 57 percent reduction in annualized relapse rate as the primary outcome measures in each of these two identically designed uh, trials um, and uh, hitting on, on multiple uh, imaging metrics of, again of focal inflammatory disease activity as well. Um, the uh, uh, safety and tolerability profiles were really quite good. So, so there, there had been a question from the phase two studies as to whether this drug dosed at lo much lower milligram doses than the currently approved ocrelizumab would indeed have as high an efficacy. And uh, of course, not head to head with ocrelizumab, but the magnitude of difference with teriflunamide was overall quite impressive. And, uh, and the relatively boring safety profile uh, appears quite attractive as well. And then we've alluded to uh, two other S1P1s, right? Ozanamode and, and Ponesabode. Peter? Yes. So as we discussed, there typically are not head-to-head -head studies with these, but they've shown uh, efficacy in, um, in phase three trials and, and will be moving forward. They are each slightly different molecules that are, um, as we mentioned, somewhat shorter acting. So I think we will we'll see as we move forward as to whether that will lead to more rapid rebound. That's something we might have to consider um, patients coming off of them. The um, efficacy part of the equation looks very similar to saponamod and, and the older generation fingolimod with probably subtle differences in terms of their engagement of um, other targets in, in CNS. Uh, so we'll, we'll wait and see how those evolve over time. And then we have an entirely different type agent which will report out data very soon and that's uh, high dose biotin. So the idea there being that it's theoretically uh, restoring or enhancing mitochondrial function and therefore allowing them to preserve uh, neuronal integrity. Um, interesting study. Uh, they had one small study that was positive, but what's interesting about the biotin uh, developmental pathway is that their primary outcome measure is improvement. And they will report out for AAN, although we may hear an announcement sooner because they're putting their data together. Other agents, anyone wants to mention? There's one, that, since we talked about um, saponimod and SPMS, maybe worth just mentioning the one drug approved for primary progressive MS, which is uh, ocrelizumab. Um, and uh, you know, this was a trial that was a fairly large primary progressive trial with ocrelizumab anti-CD20 against uh, placebo. Patients entering had to have uh, uh, primary progressive MS clinically and also a positive CSF profile, at least at the level of the uh, antibodies. And, um, and there was a modest but a statistically significant uh, benefit in terms of uh, confirmed disability progression with the anti-CD20 versus the, um, the placebo. This study was on the coattails of the Olympus trial with um, uh, rituximab, which was a negative trial uh, in primary progressive uh, MS with this other anti-CD20. And some of the lessons learned in terms of potentially patient profile that's more likely to benefit were implemented in the design of the uh, oratory ocrelizumab trial. It bucked the trend of trying to do subset analysis of failed studies usually gives you a failed study. And in fact, the Olympus trial was just the opposite, that they took the subset analysis and turned it into a good uh, phase three trial. There are uh, several groups that are looking at BTK inhibitors, which affect B cells and innate immunity. There's a very interesting gold nanoparticle uh, study that's looking at uh, trying to boost remyelinization, CNS repair, and chronic optic neuropathy. It's kind of interesting, different. 